Can AI Cook? There's a lot of talk about AI taking over industries, and as an aspiring food blogger, I wanted to see how safe my niche was. And as much fun as it would be to glue a wooden spoon on top of a Roomba, set it on top of a counter and call it a win, we're gonna try out AI's ability to generate a truly unique, but delicious recipe. I asked ChatGPT to come up with a unique and interesting recipe, and after a couple of very carefully crafted prompts, we came up with something that I can honestly say I've never seen before. Now, we're gonna judge this recipe on how easy the directions are to follow, how well the flavors go together, and how the final texture comes out, and give it a score at the end. When starting a recipe you've never tried before, it's always important to get all the prep out of the way first, so let's start with our ingredient list. So to kick off this monstrosity, we're gonna need two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs cut into bite-sized pieces, two onions, finely chopped, four cloves of garlic, minced, that's not gonna be enough, two cups of diced pineapple, fresh or canned, two cups of diced sweet potatoes, two cups of coconut milk, two cups of vegetable broth, two tablespoons of curry powder, two teaspoons of smoked paprika, two teaspoons of turmeric, two teaspoons of garam masala, one teaspoon of ground ginger, I don't know why we're not using fresh, salt and pepper to taste, four tablespoons of coconut oil, and some fresh cilantro and lime wedges for garnish. Let's begin. Heat things up. In a large skillet or Dutch oven, who uses Dutch ovens? Melt coconut oil over medium heat. Add chopped onions and cook until softened, about five minutes. Add minced garlic and cook for another minute until fragrant. Who adds garlic after onions? I'm taking a point off for that. Introduce the chicken like it's some sort of networking event. Add the chicken thigh pieces to the skillet. Cook until they're nicely browned on all sides, about eight to 10 minutes. This will infuse the dish with rich flavor and succulents. Why does ChatGPT sound like he wants me to get in the back of a van after? Pineapple paradise. I, I don't know if I can keep reading this. Toss in the diced pineapple and sweet potatoes. Let them mingle with the chicken. Yeah, this is a networking event. There's, there's business cards going around. Let them mingle with the chicken and absorb all those delicious flavors. The pineapple adds a sweet and tangy twist that will, oh, we're skipping this. Spice it up. Sprinkle curry powder, smoked paprika, turmeric, garam masala, and ground ginger over the mixture. Stir well to coat everything evenly and let the spices bloom. You bloom your spices at the beginning in hot oil before you add everything else. I'm taking a point off. Creamy coconut dream, <laughs> oh no. Pour in the coconut milk and vegetable broth, give it a good stir to combine all the ingredients, season with salt and pepper to taste. Simmer and infuse, reduce the heat to low and let the curry simmer gently for 20 to 25 minutes, allowing the flavors to melt together and blah, blah, blah. If you boil it too high, you're gonna pull all the moisture out of your chicken and you're gonna have very, very dry chicken. Typically, you would let the potatoes cook before you put the chicken in or you would cook the chicken separately and add it in at a later stage. You can get away with like slow cooking it if the heat is low enough. If you follow this, make sure it's low. I'm taking away half a point because this could go poorly. Taste test and adjust. Take a spoonful and savor the explosion of flavors. Adjust the seasoning if needed. That's a pretty cool disclaimer. It's like, hey, if it didn't turn out well, you didn't do a good job of seasoning it to your tastes. It's not my fault as the recipe creator. I might actually steal it. Garnish and serve. Once the chicken's cooked through, which was like half an hour ago, and the sauce is thickened to your liking, remove from heat, Garnish with fresh cilantro and a squeeze of lime juice for a burst of freshness. That's pretty typical, but that's okay. Serving suggestions, serve your, I'm not pronouncing that out loud, uh, hot over a bed of fluffy quinoa or cauliflower rice. Now my only problem with that is it tells you to garnish your dish and then serve it over some quinoa. I don't think anyone's gonna follow that literally, but I'm still taking away half a point. And now we have our AI lunches for the week. As far as process goes, we're taking off a point for putting the onions in before the garlic. We're taking off a point for telling us we're gonna bloom our spices halfway through in a semi-cold pan. We're gonna take a point off because the directions say to simmer until the sauce thickens the way that you want it to, but there's nothing that we've added that's going to thicken the sauce. There's not enough starch in the sweet potatoes. It's just gonna be kind of watery until there's no sauce left. And then we're gonna take off half a point for telling us to garnish the dish before we actually serve it. So that gets us with a 6.5 as far as directions. And now to try it. Truthfully, it's a lot better than I was expecting it would be. The chicken is overcooked, but that's what you expect when you cook chicken on the stovetop for 40 minutes. Surprisingly, not a lot of flavor has seeped into the sweet potato. The pineapple still tastes like pineapple. The sauce is definitely missing cumin, and I would put in a little bit of coriander as well. 
and cardamom. Overall, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. I've had worse recipes made by people. Texture-wise, it's very, very runny. I'm more of a rice guy. The quinoa is okay, but I normally like it to sit nice and thick on the fork. This just kind of runs off. I'm eating a soup. The potatoes are cooked well. The chicken's overdone. The pineapple's still kind of crunchy. You do get a decent amount of different textures on the palate, but honestly, it's not the worst thing in the world. Overall, seven and a half. Overall, that gives us a passing score of 70%, which I find terrifying. So I'm gonna put my head down and come up with something better. But final thoughts, it's a pretty good recipe, but it needs more garlic.